Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, Northwoods Engineered. Today I'm going to be showing you the second groomer that I've made for grooming cross-country ski trails. Uh, the, my other video, my first video that I put out last year, I'll link that above and in the description, uh, that was a groomer that I have at my cabin, which is about four hours from where I live. And at my house now I have uh, a few trails through my property, so I wanted to build a groomer to have down here so I don't have to haul the other one back and forth. The trails here are fairly skinny, so I couldn't build one that was as, as long and as wide as the one that I have at my cabin. And I also didn't want to spend as much money, I just wanted to make something kind of a little bit simpler uh, that, would, that would work for us, uh, just for classic tracks. We won't be skate skiing here, there's not enough room. So uh, I built it a couple weeks ago and I've used it a few times and it's been working pretty well for me. So it's about 42 inches wide rather than 48 like the other one and then it's 48 inches uh, long. Um, and that's why I can fit in the, in the turns on the small trail. Um, once again, I used these black uh, snowmobile trailer runners. Um, they aren't the cheapest thing. I, I ended up getting a deal, deal on them through work, but if, uh, if you're looking to get something like this, they can be kind of spendy online, I found, especially on Amazon. But if you can find them at like your local farm and fleet store, they're, they're not too bad. I got them last year for like 13 bucks for like a five foot section. Um, so I used those again, a uh, little different way that I built it this year. But as you can see, just normal two by six treated lumber. Um, this time I kind of just put some spans uh, across the back and then I bent, I bent the runners over those rather than than cutting like individual boards like my last groomer and then cutting a radius on those. I just bent the runners over these uh, stringers. Um, same sort of uh, track setter on the back, but I connected it differently. So I used the exact same dimensions for the track setter pieces. Those are made out of two by sixes as well. Um, I just built a box, nothing special about that. And then I used some um, longer hinges right here to attach it, um, cut an angle here so it, so it doesn't get caught up on the back. Um, that's been working well. It, th this groom is a lot, a lot lighter than my other one. Um, you can pick it up easily. The other one, I, I don't really even add weight usually, just I just add weight to the track setter. This one I've been adding weight. Um, I have some landscape blocks that I put in here or I've been putting 40 pound bags, two 40 pound bags of softener salt in and that seems seems to do the trick. Uh, at first I didn't have any way to kind of groom the snow, it was really just packing the snow. Like on my other one I have those angles pieces that will throw the snow back and forth to kind of groom it and then, and then I'll pack it after that. I didn't have that on here and it works when you have fresh snow but then when you need to rejuvenate the trails or kind of rough up the old tracks, I didn't have anything. So what I did, I, I didn't want to make anything complicated. Uh, my other one, I just added a cutter bar made out of steel, but steel is super expensive. I don't have a welder at my house, so I had an extra piece of this runner material. So I just put a piece across at an angle and just cut these little fingers into it. So if you want to go over your trail, you, it'll cut right into the snow. It's, it's a few inches below the bottom of the boards. And um, someone commented recently about using an old truck bed liner for this, for the um, corduroy part, which you could do. I also saw a recent Facebook post of a guy that built one and he bought some like black corrugated drain pipe and put that across here and that would work too. Um, I like using this stuff. I like the, um, the texture that it leaves and then it's also, it's made to resist abrasion and for wearing. You know, it's made for snowmobile skegs to run across it and and not get beat up so uh, that's kind of why I've been using it just because it should last dragging it across the ground for a long time um, and like I said I, I, I got a deal on it so um, it was kind of the thing I wanted to use but I don't have a hitch for this one either at my house so I just put a rope on it uh, with some eye bolts into the front and then I just hook it to the back of the snowmobile it doesn't work as well as a hitch. I don't like it, especially if you go, I have a couple little hills. So if you're going down a hill, it might slide into the back of you if you're not going fast enough. And then also around trees in the woods, it can, it doesn't keep it as straight as the, the um, steel hitch. But 
either way, it's been working pretty well and I'll, I'll deal with it here, but i um, show you some videos of using it. I used it with some new snow. We have probably maybe 10 inches. Um, and then I'll show you how it works with the rejuvenating the, the old trail, so. Here's the first time I used the groomer. As you can see, I didn't have the track setter on it yet. I had it loaded down with landscaping bricks and there wasn't a ton of snow, but you can see that it didn't even uh, get rid of the marks from the tracks. And here it is going over uh, an old tracked path from before. If you look at the front where those uh, fingers are, you can see that it's it's doing a pretty good job of uh, scraping, scraping the old track out and uh, kind of getting a fresh layer out. It definitely scrapes the old snowmobile track, so it worked pretty well. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a good one.